Welcome to our stock market briefing program. Today, we dive into the latest happenings in the financial world. First up, Apple has reported a remarkable 6% increase in quarterly revenue, reaching nearly $95 billion. However, that good news comes with a catch. A staggering $14.4 billion tax payment to the EU has led to a 36% drop in profits. Despite this setback, Apple's revenue has exceeded Wall Street's expectations, showing resilience in its iPhone and subscription services. In other news, Wall Street is experiencing a significant decline in tech stocks, with Microsoft facing its worst day in years. This downturn is expected to ripple through the Australian stock market, particularly affecting tech stocks. As financial analysts keep a close eye on the situation, the mood is tense as traders brace for potential impacts on their portfolios. Finally, the competition for undersea cables between the US and China is heating up, with US senators urging a security review due to fears of sabotage. These cables are crucial for global internet connectivity, and the geopolitical stakes are high as both nations vie for control. As tensions rise, the significance of these undersea connections cannot be overstated. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage. New York Times reports that Apple has faced a significant drop in quarterly profits, primarily due to a hefty tax payment to the European Union. Despite a robust increase in sales driven by the popularity of the iPhone and other subscription services, the tech giant's profits plummeted by 36% to $14.74 billion after being ordered to pay $14.4 billion in back taxes following a court ruling. The company enjoyed a 6% revenue increase, reaching $94.93 billion, surpassing Wall Street's expectations. However, the delayed rollout of new artificial intelligence features for its devices has raised concerns among investors leading to a slight decline in share prices in after-hours trading. The Australian Broadcasting Corporation highlights the recent turmoil in tech stocks on Wall Street, with Microsoft suffering its worst day in years, which in turn is likely to affect Australian markets. The ripple effect of declining tech stock values has raised concerns among investors and analysts alike, as the performance of major tech companies often sets the tone for broader market trends. The current situation underscores the volatility present in the tech sector, prompting investors to brace for potential further declines in stock prices. The Sydney Morning Herald delves into the troubling dynamics between America's wealthy elite and the political landscape, particularly in relation to Donald Trump. The article argues that many corporations and influential figures have quietly normalized Trump's behavior despite his attempts to undermine democratic institutions. It points out that numerous companies have resumed funding politicians who denied the legitimacy of the 2020 election, contradicting their earlier vows to withdraw support. The piece draws parallels to historical instances of economic elites backing authoritarian figures, suggesting a disturbing trend in American politics that could have severe implications for the future of democracy. South China Morning Post reports on the escalating competition between the U.S. and China over undersea cables, vital for global internet connectivity. Recently, eight U.S. senators urged a security review of these cables, citing potential sabotage threats from Russia and China. Undersea cables, which carry 99% of international internet traffic, are crucial for everything from personal emails to financial transactions. The article highlights the historical significance of undersea cables, including their role during World War I and the Cold War, and emphasizes their strategic importance for national security. As both nations invest heavily in undersea cable technology, concerns about espionage and control over data flow are mounting, with the U.S. taking steps to limit Chinese involvement in this critical infrastructure. Australian Broadcasting Corporation discusses the challenges faced by regional builders in Victoria due to the lure of higher wages in Melbourne's mega-projects. 
as the state government aims to construct nearly 47,000 new homes in Ballarat by 2051. Industry leaders like Darren Trigg express concern about attracting skilled tradespeople away from more lucrative opportunities in the city. The stark wage disparity, with tradespeople in Melbourne earning significantly more than their regional counterparts, exacerbates the issue. This situation raises questions about the viability of meeting housing targets in regional areas, prompting calls for government support to entice skilled workers back to the regions. Meanwhile, advocates argue that the government's housing targets are insufficient and suggest a re-evaluation of population growth strategies to better support regional cities. Yahoo! US provides an overview of the anticipation surrounding Amazon's upcoming third-quarter earnings report, with analysts keenly focused on the company's cloud services and advertising revenue. Despite a strong year-to-date stock performance, uncertainty looms regarding retail margins and rising investment costs. Analysts from Wedbush and Bank of America express optimism about Amazon's long-term prospects, particularly in cloud computing and advertising, while cautioning that near-term revenue may fall short of expectations. As consumer spending shifts and competition increases, Amazon's ability to balance growth investments with profitability will be crucial. With various analysts maintaining buy ratings on the stock, the overall sentiment remains bullish despite the challenges ahead. BBC reports that the Secretary of State has initiated a significant process allowing members of the Legislative Assembly MLAs, in Northern Ireland to vote on the contentious post-Brexit trading arrangements. Hillary Benn's letter to the Stormont Speaker and Ministers emphasizes the urgency of presenting a motion to the Assembly by the end of November. This democratic consent motion, established in the 2020 Withdrawal Agreement, empowers local politicians to decide the fate of the Northern Ireland Protocol. While parties like Sinn Féin and SDLP are expected to back the current arrangements, the Democratic Unionist Party DUP, raises concerns about a perceived democratic deficit, as a simple majority is sufficient for the vote without cross-community support. An independent review of the arrangements will follow if the motion passes without broader consensus. The Sydney Morning Herald highlights the struggles faced by Wall Street as tech giants Microsoft and Meta platforms pull down stock indexes despite reporting impressive profits. The S&P 500 experienced a notable decline, heading for its worst day in nearly eight weeks, with both companies' stocks falling sharply due to investor disappointment regarding future growth estimates. The anticipation surrounding the results of other influential companies, including Apple and Amazon, adds to the market's tension. Despite the struggles in the tech sector, other industries like cruise lines and tobacco saw gains, showcasing a mixed performance in the market amid fluctuating economic indicators and global tensions, such as North Korea's missile tests impacting investor sentiment. According to the New York Times, the UK Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rachel Reeves, unveiled a budget aimed at stimulating economic growth through significant public spending increases. The plan outlines an ambitious £70 billion annual rise in spending over the next five years, funded by tax hikes and additional borrowing. While the budget promises substantial investment in public services, particularly the National Health Service, analysts express skepticism regarding the actual growth it will generate. The emphasis on realistic spending may lead to slower wage growth for employees, as the burden of increased employer taxes is likely to be passed down. As the Labour Party navigates its first budget in over a decade, the balance between investment and sustainable growth remains a focal point of discussion. Associated Press reports that the MLB calendar is packed with critical dates as the off-season unfolds. Starting with the resumption of trading the day after the World Series, teams have a flurry of activities lined up, including the posting period for Nippon professional baseball players and the general manager's meetings in San Antonio. Key award announcements, such as the Rookie of the Year and Most Valuable Player, 
will take place throughout November, leading up to the winter meetings in Dallas. The calendar is a whirlwind of deadlines, from qualifying offers to the Rule 5 draft, culminating in the international signing period and salary arbitration hearings in January. South China Morning Post highlights a significant meeting between U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and China's Deputy Central Bank Governor Xian Qingming, focusing on financial market monitoring and combating money laundering. This dialogue, part of a larger bilateral economic working group, underscores the importance of cooperation between the two nations, especially in light of China's recent revisions to its anti-money laundering law. The discussions included technical exercises on macroeconomic data reporting and risk management related to banking and climate, showcasing a commitment to strengthening financial oversight amid emerging challenges like cryptocurrency. Yahoo US raises concerns about the Milwaukee Bucks championship window as they begin the season with a shaky 1-3 record. Despite the star power of Giannis Antetokounmpo and Damian Lillard, the team struggles with injuries, a lack of depth, and questionable roster decisions made by general manager John Horst. The absence of Chris Middleton and the departure of Drew Holiday have left the team vulnerable, especially defensively. With an aging core and no draft picks until 2031, the Bucks face a critical season to prove they can still compete for a title and retain Giannis's loyalty or risk becoming a one-hit wonder after their 2021 championship run. Nikkei Asia reports that Japan's Mizuho Financial Group is set to launch a Tokyo-listed exchange-traded fund, ETF, in collaboration with Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund, PIF, making it easier for retail investors to access the promising Saudi market. This ETF will be linked to the FTSE Saudi Arabia Index, focusing on large and mid-cap stocks, including major players like Saudi Aramco. With a minimum investment expected to be under $1,000, Mizuho aims to attract a diverse range of investors while supporting PIF's strategy to raise capital and diversify Saudi Arabia's economy away from oil dependence, as outlined in its Vision 2030 plan. In a different context, BBC highlights the cautious atmosphere surrounding investments in artificial intelligence AI, particularly following reports of significant spending by tech giants like Meta and Microsoft. Analyst Mary and Bartles from Sanctuary Wealth suggests that the current market downturn is merely a temporary setback, emphasizing that technology companies are poised to be the primary profit makers in the future. This perspective indicates a broader confidence in the long-term potential of AI, despite immediate investor concerns. Meanwhile, the privatization process of Pakistan International Airlines PIA, has drawn attention as it attracted only one bid of 10 billion Pakistani rupees $36 million, for a 60% stake, significantly below the government's minimum price. The bid came from Blue World City, a real estate firm, amidst skepticism from other pre-qualified groups regarding the government's ability to uphold agreements. Concerns about policy continuity, particularly with the potential for political instability, have made potential investors wary. As Pakistan seeks to reform its state-owned enterprises under an IMF program, the future of PIA remains uncertain complicated by the government's recent actions regarding power contracts that have further eroded investor confidence. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of six do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the six do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. 
To customize Six Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, sixdobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive Six Do Brief via email. News breaks, buzz the ground, stories spit, walls come down, voices merge in the sound, faces mix in the crowd. Broadcasters paint the scene, world events on our screen, every link a different theme, words collide in the stream. Six degrees connect the dots, background stories more than nuts, hear the voices rise a lot, truth thumbnails in every spot. Cultures clash across the globe, spin the threads in. Come to play In the background shades of grey Every story finds its way